Callum the water rat were weary from the long night they had spent rowing along the river in their search for the lost baby otter. And then at daybreak, they heard the sound of a familiar enchanted piping, and it led them to a small island. As they walked closer to the sound of the piping and the source, they came upon a small clearing. The mole turned to the water rat. Perhaps he would never have dared to raise his eyes, but that, though the piping was now hushed, the call and the summons seemed still dominant and imperious. He might not refuse were death himself waiting to strike him instantly once he had looked with mortal eye on things rightly kept hidden. Trembling he obeyed, and of the imminent dawn, while nature, flushed with fullness of incredible color, seemed to hold her breath for the event, he looked in the very eyes of the friend and helped him. He saw the backward sweep of the curved horns, gleaming in the growing daylight. He saw the stern hooked nose between the kindly eyes that were looking down on them humorously, while the bearded mouth broke into a half smile at the corners. He saw the rippling muscles on the arm that lay across the broad chest, the long supple hand still holding the panpipes only just fallen away from his parted lips. He saw the splendid curves of the shaggy limbs disposed in majestic ease on the sword, and he saw, last of all, nestling between his very hooves, sleeping soundly in entire peace and contentment, the little, round, podgy, childish form of the baby otter. All this he saw for one moment, breathless and intense, vivid on the morning sky. And still, as he looked, he lived. And still, as he lived, he wondered. Rat, he found breath to whisper, shaking. Are you afraid? Afraid, murmured the rat, his eyes shining with unutterable love. Afraid of him? Oh, never, never. And yet, and yet, oh mole, I am afraid. Then the two animals, crouching to the earth, bowed their heads and did worship. Sudden and magnificent, the sun's broad golden disk showed itself over the horizon facing them, and the first rays shooting across the level water meadows took the animals full in the eyes and dazzled them. When they were able to look once more, the vision had vanished, and the air was full of the carol of birds that hailed the dawn. As they stared blankly in dumb misery deepening as they slowly realized all they had seen and all they had lost, a capricious little breeze dancing up from the surface of the water tossed the aspens, shook the dewy roses, and blew lightly and caressingly in their faces, and with its soft touch came instant oblivion. For this is the last best gift that the kindly demigod is careful to bestow on those to whom he has revealed himself in their helping. The gift of forgetfulness. Sweet to those whose fairness shows and remind them the good things they've chosen.
Besides, it seems like a good life. It's but one truth. The promises made for your Promises made for your past. There is but one.